First Kings chapter 2. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son. Now what's going on here? David's going to die. He's anointed Solomon to be the king. After he just had this overthrow of Abinadab. And now a proper father to his son is going to prepare his son. It'd be like a, a son joining his father in an occupation of the family. Well, this is what these tools are for. This is what this, you know, this is what this is for. Explaining everything. And that's what he's doing for Solomon. This is the kingdom. He's going to give him wise counsel before he becomes the actual king. He's going to die. He's going to set Solomon straight. I go the way of all the earth. The wages of sin is death. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. All right, you got a big responsibility now. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. And notice he says, show thyself a man. Not a child. A lot of churches are going children like today. Play the man, the Bible says. Even though you got troubles and problems, you want to bend un under them, play the man. To walk in his ways and keep his statutes. That's the law. That's the Old Testament. Solomon, you want to be approved by God, you got to do what God told us to do. And we know that Solomon won't. And his commandment and his judgments and his testimony. As is written in the law of Moses. From Genesis to uh, Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the law. They got to obey all that. One of the things in the law was you're to write a copy of the law and in your own handwriting. And you're to study it. You're to learn it. You're to read it. And it's never ever, as far as I can see, I have not seen one king, definitely in Israel, and I have not read about one king in Judah the Bible ever recorded for anybody to do that. The law said a king is not to send people into Egypt. Solomon will break that. The law said a man, a king is not to multiply wives. Solomon will break that. It said he's not to multiply horses, and he'll break that. Solomon did not obey his father in verse 3. For whatever reason. That thou mayest prosper. And he. Not really. In all thou doest. And whither so thou. Turnest. That's the first time that word shows up. Thyself. Wherever you're going to go. If you obey God. God will be with you at that turn. Well, Solomon will blow it. Massively blow it. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, Now we're going to rehash what we've already learned. We already read this. If thy children take heed to their, to the way, uh, to their way to walk before me in truth, with all their heart, and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, saith he, God, a man on the throne of Israel. But well, when we read Matthew today, one of as a family, the line of the king stopped. And there has not been a king in Israel yet. So the testimony to Israel by David is, you're not doing right. You have not obeyed the law. And when Jesus comes, the nation is sick with blindness, deafness, devils, lameness. They don't even recognize who Jesus is. So they're not doing the word of God. They have not been studying. Said he on the throne of Israel. Moreover, thou knowest also. Okay, now here we go. Here's the charge of David to Solomon. Joab, the son of Zariah. I don't know. That was David's cousin, something like that. I don't know what it would be for, for Solomon. 
but Zariah is David's sister, which would be Solomon's aunt. And the aunt of Solomon, their son, Joab, we're going to deal with. What he did to me, what he did to me, it happened to David in the kingdom, what Joab did. Sin does not affect you only. And what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, unto Abner the son of Ner, one, and that would be 2 Samuel 3, 27, and Amasa, 2 Samuel 29 and 10, the son of Jether, whom he slew, and slew, excuse me, and shed the blood of war in peace. David said it wasn't war, it was murder. Yeah, he doesn't mention Absalom. That's kind of funny. Abner. Abner slain Joab's brother in war. Peace time came and then he pulled a trick on Abner and cut him under the fifth floor with a sword. I wouldn't say cut, but went right through him. Amasa was the new ruler. Joab was fired. And Amasa took a little longer than what David prescribed. And Joab pulls a little trick on him, pulls out his sword, and cuts him through the fifth lip. There was no reason to kill Abner. There was no reason to kill Amasa. And David said, shed blood of war in peace. So thou shalt not kill does not apply to wartime by David. And we will read throughout the Bible and we will read in the New Testament that David spanked with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, men wrote the Bible, but David spoke by the Holy Spirit. And he says here, Joab is guilty. Abner, is he guilty for Asahel? Absolutely not. That was a war. And it's true. Never knows. He does not mention Solomon. Uh, Absalom. And put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet. He's just covered with blood. Do therefore according to thy wisdom. And Solomon will have wisdom. And let not his forehead white head. <laughs> Joab has white hair. He's an old man. Go down to the grave in peace. Oh, you know don't have no rest assurance of Joab. Don't write on his tomb R.I.P. You have a charge, Solomon. With your wisdom, he's to be put to death. And it's funny, why didn't David do it? He had all opportunity with Abner, didn't he? Joab, come here. I understand that you, but there was no witnesses. Couldn't do nothing with the law. Amasa, there were no witnesses. Joab was slick. Do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his hoar head, his white head, go down to the grave in peace. Next one. Both show kindness unto the sons of Barazai, Barazai, the Gilead, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, thy brother. Now, it's not the same mother, but they're of David, so they're brothers. Remember remember when I fled Absalom? This man, Barazai, and his family, they helped me, they took care of me. Show them respect. Let them eat at your table. Number three. Behold, thou hast with thee Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite of Barharam which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. So David swore by, I mean, David's fed up. He's tired. He's, he's been on the run. This guy, oh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, listen, just shut up. Oh, I'm so, I'm not going to do anything to you in, in the name of the Lord. 
And Dave's like, I wish I didn't say that, but I don't want to hear it. I want to go back home. I'm tired of this running. I did it with Star. I did it with Absalom. But I told the man I wasn't going to do nothing. I was not going to slay him. So what's David do now? Solomon, go get him. <laughs> go get him. It's been on David's mind. Now the sons of Zeruiah, man, let us chop off that guy's head. And David's like, I'm not even the king right now. We're not going to do it. Now therefore hold him not guiltless. For thou art a wise man. And knowest what thou oughtest, that's the first time that shows up, oughtest to do with him. It's almost like, okay, I just explained to you the situation, Solomon. Now, what came into your head, <laughs> that quick, do it. Solomon is quick on his feet, and we're going to get to the we're going to get to the story. Here's these two women bubbling and arguing about a baby, and instantly Solomon said, "Okay, give me a sword." <laughs> Boom! There's the. There was no going chambers. There was no meditation. There was all right. Here's the answer. Now, therefore, hold him not guiltless. He's guilty. For thou art a wise man and knowest what thou oughtest to do with him. But his whorehead, he's got white hair too. Bring thou down to the grave with blood. Why? He was casting stones at David and his men. The ambition that Shimei wanted was, he wanted them dead. He wanted to stone them. But God was protecting them. So now you get him. The, the ambition of Shimei, he wanted David and his men dead. That's why he was cast in stone. Stone is the capital punishment of the law of the Bible, and that's what Shimei was trying to do. Because remember, he kept saying, oh, for the blood of Saul, for the blood of God, I'll do it. I'll kill you, David. But God protected David. So David slept with his fathers. And that doesn't mean that, you know, he crawled in the same crypt where his father would be, Jesse, you know, that means... He's in Abraham's bosom sleeping. We read about that in Luke 16. Looks like Abraham's the only one that's awake and able to talk to the people and now. Probably carried on a lot of conversations over there. And was buried in the city of David. And they, uh, you find that there's a reference to that in Acts chapter 2. David's sepulcher is here. It's still there in Acts 2. Reigned over Israel 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron. And 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. And you remember um, Abner brought up one of Saul's sons. I forget what his name was. Ishmanish. And Ishmanish reigned in Israel for seven years. And then when he would, somebody went in his bed and chopped off his head and brought the head to David. And after that, David was made king over all Israel and Judah. So there's always been that split. And together, now, the partial reign, the partial reign, 33 years. Well, Jesus Christ died approximately 33 and a half years. Same time as David. Same time as Jesus. He reigned in Jerusalem, and that's the city. Then, after the, then sat Solomon upon the throne of David. That's the throne where Jesus Christ is going to sit. The position of what? Is that going to be the literal seat that David had? I don't know. But I know the seat as in Jerusalem over the Jews. But under Jesus, there will be one nation, not Israel nor and Judah south, they will be both together. Upon the throne of David his father and his kingdom was established greatly. Now we're going to stop there because we're going to pick up Adonijah again. We're going to see how Solomon handles Adonijah because we left off, we'll talk about, all right, Adonijah, go home. If you, if you prove yourself to be a wicked man, you're dead. But you go home. We're going to look at Abiathar the priest. That sided with Adonijah, and he sure enough. We're going to look at Joab. We're going to look at what he does, but he's a murderer. 
and then we're going to look at the priest, and then we're going to look at Shimei. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it one night, or we'll have to break it up, but there's much to read and much in this chapter. So as Solomon sits on that throne, the authority, I am not going to take any rebellion. My dad may have, don't you mess with me. And Solomon is setting forth in this chapter. You better watch out. Because if you so dare to go against me, you wait till I see what the people that went against David, wait till you see what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it fairly, and I'm going to do it rightly. It gives him a chance. It gives him a chance. It. Except for Joab. The only one who doesn't give is Joab. Because he's guilty. And it's funny because you got to look at it for the fact that with Joab, we'll come to it, is David had no witnesses. But Solomon go get some. But we'll talk about that. This is a great chapter. It might be two or three nights on this one.